A lot of drivers seem to take their brakes for granted. And why not? They're robust and reliable. The biggest problem we have with brakes seems to be adjustment. At least, that's what the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance's brake stats tell us. When driving across the prairies or the plains, you'd probably never notice if you had a brake or two out of adjustment. But you can't take brakes for granted when you're driving in mountains. That's why you'll often find brake check areas at the top of steep mountain grades. This video explains what you're supposed to do in a brake check area, other than walk around, stretch and cool down your tires. These videos are made possible by Volvo Trucks North America. In part one, we looked at how heat can affect brake drums and how that can affect stopping performance. In this video, our chief instructor Andy Roberts of Mountain Transport Institute in Castlegar, British Columbia is going to walk us through a brake check brake inspection. Bear in mind that this is not a full brake adjustment check. We're not going to cover how to check brake adjustment with mark and measure in this video. We'll assume that the truck's brakes have been checked for adjustment before we began driving. Andy is simply demonstrating how to confirm that your brakes are still properly adjusted when stopped in a brake check area before descending a grade. So we're just going to run through the procedure that you should be following at a brake check to check out your truck and make sure everything's in good working order before you go down the hill. I got my four-way flashers and my lights on so that I can check my lights, confirm they're still working. I'm going to check my tires and I'm going to check that my brakes are still adjusted. So as I go around, I'm going to confirm my glad hands are secure, obviously critical to our braking system. Right now I'm going to check, I'm looking across to ensure that I have approximately a 90 degree angle between the push rod and the slack adjuster on the spring brake. When we did our pre-trip inspection this morning, we checked our free play to make sure it was within spec. We then applied our parking brake to make sure that translated to that 90 degree angle. So as I continue around, I'm going to check lights, tire inflation, possibly hub temperatures, tire temperature if I'm concerned, especially on a hot day. I'll carry on around. I've got a midship turn signal and marker light working. Get to my trailer axles and I'm going to check the 90 degree angle across there. Tread depth is good. All the tires are inflated. Again, hub temperatures are good here. I'm going to just poke my head under here. I should be able to get the 90s on both of the rear brakes at this point. Marker light here is good. All the marker lights on the back, the signal lights, tail lights are working. Now we're going to carry up on the side and check everything we checked on the other side. Lights, flashers at the front. I'm going to switch my lights, release my trailer brakes. So now I'm going to shut off my lights, shut off the four ways. I'm going to get down here and charge the trailer with air so I can check for leaks and I'm going to apply the hand valve so I can check the brake lights as I walk around. I've turned all my other lights off so I know these are brake lights, they're not just tail lights, tractor brake lights are working. One last set to check at the back to make sure that uh, we have brake lights as we did on our pre-trip this morning. So both brake lights are functioning great. So the key to remember is that we want to ensure everything's functioning properly but still before we head down the hill. The last step is going to be when I get in the cab, before I pull out of the brake check, I'm going to do a hand valve tug test to prove that my trailer service brakes are functioning. There were some trailers built at one time that had a spring brake priority system. The spring brakes would release even if there wasn't enough air in the system to apply the service brakes. It's always important to make sure those service brakes are working in case you need them going down the hill. Once you've done that, you just need to figure out what the best gear is to go down the hill and have a safe ride to the bottom. Well, that covers about all you need to know about how to inspect your brakes before heading down a long hill. We want to avoid using the service brakes on a long descent, but it's critical that the brakes be in good condition and properly adjusted before heading down the hill, just in case we need them. Part 3 of this series covers what you need to know about hills, including understanding grade and warning signs, and how to use a Volvo iShift transmission on a long grade. 
In part four, we hit the road to demonstrate the correct driving techniques for long grades. I'm Jim Park. We'll catch you on the next one.